السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times. Welcome to lesson number 171 of Tafsirul Jalalain. Alhamdulillah yesterday we were able to explore verses 30 to 53 of Surah Maryam. So inshallah today we're going to pick up right where we left off with verse number 54. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وناديناه من جانب الطور الأيمن وقربناه نجيا ووهبنا له من رحمتنا أخاه هارون نبيا واذكر في الكتاب إسماعيل إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيًّا وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيًّا أولئك الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين من ذرية آدم وممن حملنا مع نوح ومن ذرية إبراهيم وإسرائيل وممن هدينا واجتبينا إذا تتلى عليهم آيات الرحمن خروا سجدا وبكيا فخلف من بعدهم خلف أضاعوا الصلاة واتبعوا الشهوات فسوف يلقون غيا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل صالحا فأولئك يدخلون الجنة ولا يظلمون شيئا جنات عدن التي وعد الرحمن عباده بالغيب إنه كان وعده مأتيا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا إلا سلاما ولهم رزقهم فيها بكرة وعشيا تلك الجنة التي نورث من عبادنا من كان تقيا وما نتنزل إلا بأمر ربك له ما بين أيدينا وما خلفنا وما بين ذلك وما كان ربك نسيا قال الإمام جلال الدين المحلي رحمه الله تعالى واذكر في الكتاب إسماعيل إنه كان صادق الوعد لم يعد شيئا إلا وفى به وانتظر من وعده ثلاثة أيام أو حولا حتى رجع إليه في مكان وكان رسولا إلى جرهما نبيا وكان يأمر أهله أي قومه بالصلاة والزكاة وكان عند ربه مرضيا أصله مرضوب قلبت الواوان يا أين والضمة كسرة واذكر في الكتاب إدريس هو جد أبي نوح إنه كان صديقا نبيا ورفعناه مكانا عليا هو حي في السماء الرابعة أو السادسة أو السابعة أو في الجنة أدخلها بعد أن أذيق الموت وأحيي ولم يخرج منها So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning a series of different prophets He's making brief references to them And the objective behind these brief references is to highlight their status, their virtues but also to console and comfort the Prophet ﷺ. So in this surah, in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned 10 prophets by name. He has mentioned Zakariya, Yahya, Isa, Ibrahim, Ishaq, Ya'qub, Ismail, Musa, Harun, Idris, alayhi salam. 
and he has mentioned particular qualities or characteristics of each of these prophets that we believe in. Right? Belief in prophets is one of the most important aspects of our entire system of belief. And it highlights their status, their rank, and they are being mentioned in order for us as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to learn from their examples and to also follow in their footsteps. And that is one of the main reasons why these stories are mentioned in the Qur'an. So we can read them, we can learn from them, we can study them, we can analyze them, and we can extract lessons, morals, guidance that will help us in our daily life, that will help us in terms of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah very quickly makes reference to Ismail alayhi salam. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ismail. And mention in the book the story of Ismail. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ He was truly a man of his word. وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّ And was a messenger and a prophet. He was true to his promise, a messenger and a prophet. So here Imam al-Mahalli rahimullah says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ismail. And mention the story of Ismail in Al-Kitab in the Qur'an. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ He was true to his promise. He was a man of his word. صادق الْوَعْدِ Truthful, literal translation, truthful of his promise. Or truthful of the promise. And the meaning that's being conveyed is that he was true to his promise. If he made a promise, he would stay true to it and he wouldn't break it. لَمْ يَعِدْ شَيْئًا إِلَّا وَفَابِ he, didn't, he never promised anything except that he fulfilled it. He kept every promise that he made. And then he mentions an example of this. And this is an example that is mentioned in uh, certain riwayat. Perhaps they come from Isra'iliyat, Allahu A'lam. But it's mentioned that in tadara man wa'adahu thalathata ayyamin aw hawlan That he waited for a person he made a promise to for three days according to one narration or an entire year according to another narration. That he had made a promise to an individual that I will wait for you at this particular spot and that person perhaps forgot and showed up three days later and Ismail السلام, was still waiting there. Because he was صادق الوعد He was a man of his word, he kept his promises أو حولا, According to another riwayah, it was for an entire year حتى رجع إليه في مكاني, right, Until that person returned to him While he was still in that same place Waiting for him Maybe this is mentioned as an example Of how true he was to his promise And how he would always keep his promises وكان رسولا, And he was also a rasul, he was a messenger إِلَىٰ جُرْهُمَا Right, to the people of جُرْهُمَا نَبِيًّا And he was a prophet. And this is of course Ismail, the other son of Ibrahim a.s. Um, whom Ibrahim a.s. left along with his mother in Mecca without any provisions and no water by themselves. And then eventually, you know, the whole story of Ismail a.s. and the uh, uncovering of the well of Zamzam and building and constructing the Kaaba, which are mentioned in uh, other places in the Quran and also in several ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وكان يأمر أهله بالصلاة والزكاة وكان عند ربه مرضية. And he used to urge his people to pray and give zakah, and his Lord was well pleased with him. His Lord was well. Pleased with him. And he, Allah was pleased with him and had accepted him. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ And he used to command his family, a قَوْمَهُ Meaning his people, بِالصَّلَاةِ zakah, With prayer and zakah. And we see these two acts of worship being repeated again. Isa a.s. earlier in the story, in the surah said, وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ zakah, Highlighting that these are two very important devotional ritual acts of worship that were common across the uh, ways of life of all prophets and messengers. That although the details may have varied, 
But these were always two important acts of worship that existed. as ritual prayer, and as zakah this uh, ritual, charity. وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيَّةً And he was, uh, his Lord was well pleased with him. All right. And he highlights that the word مَرْضِيًّا right, originally was مَرْضُوٌ right, That's the original construction of the word. Both of the wows were changed into yas and the dhamma was changed into a kasra. So marudun became marudiyan, marudiyun, right? If it's in the state of rafa. So he's highlighting the morphology of this particular word. Wadkur fil kitab Idris innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya. And mention the story of Idris in the book. He was surely a man of truth and a prophet. So wadkur fil kitab Idris and mention the story of Idris in the kitab, in the book, meaning the Qur'an. And he is the grandfather of the father of Nuh a.s. Who was Jaddu Abi Nuhin. Right? Idris is the grandfather of the father of Nuh a.s. Innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya. He was a man of truth. Siddiqan. Right? He was a person of Sidq. Truthfulness, both in terms of behavior and speech. Nabiyan and a prophet. وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيَّ And we elevated him to an honorable status. We raised him to a high position. وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيًّا And Imam Al-Mahalli says, what, what does that mean? What is this honorable status? What is this high position? It means he is alive in Jannah. هُوَ حَيٌّ الرَّابِعَةِ That he is alive in the fourth sky أو السادسة or the sixth أو السابعة or the seventh أو في الجنة or in paradise right, One of these That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had raised him up and elevated him to somewhere in the skies and the riwayat differ either in the fourth, the sixth or the seventh or Allah had raised him up to Jannah, to paradise Ud خَلَهَا that he was entered into paradise after having been made to taste death وَأُحْيَى and then brought back to life وَلَمْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا and then he, he did not leave it right? he did not leave paradise قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ أُولَٰئِكَ مُبْتَدَأٌ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ صِفَةٌ لَهُ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ بَيَانٌ لَهُمْ وَهُوَ فِي مَعْنَى الصِّفَةِ وَمَا بَعْدَهُ إِلَىٰ جُمْلَةِ الشَّرْطِ صِفَةٌ لِلنَّبِيِّينَ فَقَوْلُهُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ آدَمْ أَيْ إِدْرِيسُ وَمِمَّنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوحٍ فِي السَّفِينَةِ أَيْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ بْنُ إِبْنِهِ سَامْ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمُ أَيْ إِسْمَاعِيلُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَعْقُوبُ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ إِسْرَائِيلُ وَهُوَ يَعْقُوبُ أي موسى وهارون وزكريا ويحيى وعيسى وممن هدينا واجتبينا أي من جملتهم وخبر أولئك إذا تتلى عليهم آيات الرحمن خروا سجدا وبكيا جمع ساجد وباك أي فكونوا مثلهم وأصل بكي بكوي قلبت الواو ياء والضمة كسرة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says regarding all of these prophets and messengers, right? Those were some of the prophets whom Allah has blessed min Adam from among the descendants of Adam. And of those we carried with Nuh. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْرَائِيلِ And of the descendants of Ibrahim and Israel. وَمِمَّنْ هَدَيْنَا وَاجْتَبَيْنَا And of those we guided and chose. إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَانِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَبُكِيًّا Whenever the verses or the revelations of the Most Merciful are recited to them, they fall down prostrating and weeping.
They fall down sujjadan in sajda, bukiyan, weeping. So here, Imam al mahalli rahimahullah says, Ula'ika. Right, Ula'ika is a ismul ishara. It's a demonstrative pronoun. And it is used uh, to indicate towards something that is far away. That is in the distance. Yani, Ula'ika means those. Right, it's for the plural, those. Right, and he says that is the mubtada. Grammatically speaking, it's playing the role of the subject of the sentence. Those are the ones whom Allah has bestowed His blessings upon. Right? Those are the ones who Allah has blessed and favored. Sifatan lahu. And He says that Alladina an'am Allahu alayhim is a sifa. Right, it is the adjective for ulaika. Those, who are those? Those are the ones who Allah has blessed and favored. Min al nabiyin bayanun nahum. This is an explanation or clarification for who they are. Min al nabiyin from the prophets. Wa huwa fi ma'na sifati. And this is also conveying the meaning of an adjective. Wa ma ba'dahu. And what comes after min al nabiyin until the jumla to shart until the conditional statement, which is ida tutla alayhim. Right. So everything until ida tutla alayhim ayatul rahman is sifa, is an adjective, is a description for an nabiyin. So all of that, right? Everything is going to be a description or an adjective for an nabiyin. فَقَوْلُهُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ آدَمْ From the progeny, from the descendants of Adam. And he says, أَيْ إِدْرِيسُ That's referring to Idris alayhi salam, who was mentioned. وَمِمَّنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوحٍ And those whom we carried along with Nuh alayhi salam. فِي السَّفِينَةِ In the ark. Meaning, إِبْرَاهِيمُ بْنُ إِبْنِهِ سَامْ Right, Ibrahim. The son of Nuh alayhi salam's son, whose name was Sam. And that's the lineage. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ Ibrahim, And from the descendants and progeny of Ibrahim, meaning Ismail, Ishaq, and Ya'qub. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ Israel, And from the descendants and progeny of Israel, which is another name for Ya'qub alayhi salam. And his progeny includes Musa, Harun, Zakariya, Yahya, and Isa. So all the prophets that were mentioned previously, all ten prophets, are covered in this description. Right? All ten prophets that have been mentioned in this surah so far are covered within this description. We have uh, Zakariya, Yahya, Isa, Ibrahim, Ishaq, Yaqub, Ismail, Musa, Harun, and Idris. Right? All ten of these prophets are included within this description. And then Allah says, وَمِمَّنْ هَدَيْنَا وَجْتَبَيْنَا and also, of those we guided and selected and chose. A min jumlatihim, min jumlatihim. Among them, in all prophets, all messengers. Wa khabaru ula'ik. Now the khabar of this demonstrative pronoun, ula'ika, is إِذَا tutla alayhim ayatul rahman. When the signs, when the verses, when the revelations of ar rahman are recited to them, Kharru, they fall down sujjadan. They fall down in sajda, bukiyan, weeping. And he says the word sujjadan is the plural of the word sajid. And bukiyan is the plural of the word bakin. Sajid, one who's doing sajda. Bakin, one who's weeping, one who's crying. A, fakunu mithnahum. And the meaning of this is, so be like them. That when the ayat of Ar Rahman, when the verses, when the revelations of the most merciful are recited to you and you hear them, it should have this effect upon our hearts, causing us to fall down on our knees, bowing before Allah, putting our forehead on the ground in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the state of sujood, in the state of sajda, bukiyan, and it moves us emotionally, causing us to weep and cry as well. Be like these prophets. 
be like these individuals whom Allah has favored and blessed. Then he highlights the, the construction of the word bukiyun. He says the origin or the original construction of the word buki was bukuyun. Qullibat al wawu ya'an. That wow was changed or transformed into a ya. Then the two ya's were assimilated together. And the dhamma was changed into a kasra. So bukuyun became buk bukiyun. Right? And this is something that is studied in ilmu sarf. This is something that is studied when you study Arabic morphology. You figure out the patterns of words and how words are constructed and formed, etc. قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ بِتَرُكِهَا كَالْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَى وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيًّا هُوَ وَادٍ فِي جَهَنَّمُ أي يَقَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَّا لَكِنْ مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ, يد... فأولئك يدخلو... يُدْخَلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ يُنْقَصُونَ شَيْئًا مِنْ ثَوَابِهِمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنٍ إِقَامَةٍ بَدَلٌ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وَعْدَ الرَّحْمَانُ عِبَادَهُ بِالْغَيْبِ حَالٌ أي غَائِبِينَ عَنْهَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ وَعْدُهُ أي مَوْعُودُهُ مَأْتِيًّا بِمَعْنَى آتِيًّا وَأَصْلُهُ مَأْتُوٌّ أو مَوْعُودُهُ هُنَا الْجَنَّةُ يَأْتِيهِ أَهْلُهُ لا يسمعون فيها لغوا من الكلام إلا لكن يسمعون سلاما من الملائكة عليهم أو من بعضهم على بعض ولهم رزقهم فيها بكرة وعشية أي على قدرهما في الدنيا وليس في الجنة نهار ولا ليل بل ضوء ونور أبدا تلك الجنة التي نورث نعتي وننزل مِنْ عِبَادِنَا مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيًّا بِطَاعَتِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُ الصَّلَةِ But there came after them generations who neglected prayer وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ and followed their desires فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا and soon they will face the evil consequences. They will come face to face with their evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that خَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ Now خَلْفٌ is used for successive generations with a negative connotation. Those successive generations and communities that are disobedient or that are considered to be wrongdoers or that are considered to be sinful. So khalfun, khalafa min ba'dihim khalfun. Generations came after them. And khalfun with the sukun on the nam is conveying again a negative connotation. So generations came after them, meaning after the prophets and messengers. Ada'u salata, who neglected prayer. Bitarkiha, by abandoning it. كَالْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَى Like the Yahud and the Nasara. وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ And who followed their desires and their lusts. مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي In terms of acts of disobedience and sins. فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيًّا Soon they will meet غَيًّا Soon they will meet غَيًّا And then Imam Mahalli says غَيًّا هُوَ وَادٍ فِي جَهَنَّمْ it is a valley and hellfire, according to one interpretation. A yaqa'una fihi, and what that means is they will fall into this valley, right? They will the, the, those uh, those generations that came after the prophets and messengers who neglected and abandoned prayer and who followed their desires, they will enter into this valley of hellfire that is known as ghay. Illa then Allah makes an exception. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا Except for those who repent 
who believe, who do righteous deeds. فَأُولَئِكْ they يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ They will enter paradise. وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا And they will not be wronged in the least. They will not be wronged at all. So, إِلَّا لَكِنْ However, مَنْ تَابَ The one who repents. وَآمَنَ And believes. وَعَمِلَ صَادِحًا And does righteous deeds. Three things. Tawbah, Iman, Al-A'mal Salihah. Except, however, the one who repents and believes and does righteous deeds, فَأُولَٰئِكْ They, here he uses سِيغَةُ الْمَجْهُولِ يُدْخَلُونَ They will be entered into paradise. And in the qira'ah that we are more familiar with, يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ They will enter paradise. وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ يُنْقَصُونَ شَيْئًا and they will not be wronged in any way. Min thawabihim. Nothing will be decreased. There will be no decrease from their reward. Jannati adnin illati wa'ad al-Rahman ibadahu bil ghaib. Jannati adnin illati wa'ad al-Rahman ibadahu bil ghaib. Innahu kana wa'aduhu ma'tiyya. They will enter the gardens of eternity, of everlasting bliss, promised by the Lord of mercy to his servants. It is not yet seen, but truly his promise will be fulfilled. Right? They will be in the gardens of eternity, promised in trust by the most merciful to his servants. Surely his promise will be fulfilled. Right? So, Jannati Adinin. He says, gardens of Aden, meaning iqama, gardens of residence. And he says, badalun min al jannah. Right? Badalun min al jannah. It is the badal from the word jannah that came earlier. And yadkhulun al jannah. Which gardens? Jannati Adnin. Gardens of eternity, gardens of lasting bliss, gardens of residence. أَلَّتِي وَعَدَ الرَّحْمَانُ عِبَادَهُ Those that the Most Merciful has promised to His servants بِالْغَيْبِ With the unseen. He says بِالْغَيْبِ here is حَال Circumstantial adverb. A غَائِبِينَ عَنْهَا That they are not present there. They are from the عِلْمُ الْغَيْبِ They've never seen them. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, has promised them to the believers. And he promised by the Lord of mercy to his servants, Bil ghayb, it is not yet seen. A ghaibina anha. That they are absent, right? They are not present in these gardens. Innahu kana wa'duhu a maw'uduhu ma'tiya. Truly, his promise will be fulfilled. Wa'duhu, his promise, maw'uduhu, what he has promised, ma'tiyan, bima'ana atiyan, will definitely happen. The thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised will definitely come true, will definitely be fulfilled, atiyan will definitely come. And he says the word ma'tiyun uh, originally was ma'tuyun. Right? And it goes through that same process where the wow is changed to a ya. Then the ya is assimilated into the ya, and the dhamma is changed into a kasra, and it became ma'tiyun. Oh, maw'uduhu huna al jannatu. That what is promised here is paradise, yatihi ahluhu. Its people will come to it for sure. La yasma'una fiha laghwan illa salama, wa lahum rizquhum fiha bukrata wa ashiya. There, they will never hear any idle talk, only salam, only peace. And there they will have their provisions morning and evening. So, لا يسمعون فيها لغوا من الكلام They will not hear any vain speech in it. They will not hear any idle, vain talk. إلا Except, لكن يسمعون, right? Except, however, they will hear salaman. They will hear 
salaman, and here he says, yani literally, the greeting of peace. من الملائكة عليهم from the angels upon them أو من بعضهم على بعض or they will give salam to each other right they will give salam to each other safety security peace reassurance ولهم رزقهم فيها بكرة وعشية and they will have their provisions therein morning and evening أي على قدرهما في الدنيا meaning based upon their measurements from this world because there is no night or day in paradise. Rather, it's dhaw'un, it's light, nurun, illumination, abadan, for eternity. There's no like night and day in paradise. But they will receive their provisions night and day according to the measurements of this dunya. And to give us an understanding. Tilka al jannatu allati nurithu min ibadina man kana taqiyya. Right. That is paradise. That is Jannah, which we will grant, which we will give to whoever is devout among our servants. So, Tilka al Jannatu, that is Al Jannah, Al Nurithu Min Ibadina, which we will give to our servants. So, this is Nurithu here means Nurti, to give, Wa Nunzin, that we will give and allow our servants to settle in. Man kana taqiyya, but those servants of ours who are muttaqi, who have taqwa bi ta'atihi by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala rahimahullah, wa nazala lamma ta'akhar al-wahyu ayyaman, wa qala al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam li Jibreel alayhi salam, ma yamna'uka an tazurana akthara mimma tazuruna. وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكْ لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِينَا أَيْ أَمَامَنَا مِنْ أُمُورِ الْآخِرَةِ وَمَا خَلْفَنَا مِنْ أُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا بَيْنَ ذَلِكْ أَيْ مَا يَكُونُ فِي هَذَا الْوَقْتِ إِلَى قِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ أَيْ لَهُ عِلْمُ ذَلِكَ جَمِيعِهِ وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيًّا بِمَعْنَى نَاسِيًّا أَيْ تَارِكًا لَكَ بِتَأْخِيرِ الْوَحْيِ عَنْكَ هُوَ رَبُّ مالك السماوات والأرض وما بينهما فاعبده واصطبر لعبادته أي اصبر عليها هل تعلم له سميا أي مسمى بذلك لا So here Imam Al-Mahani رحمه الله He starts by highlighting the background or the context in which this particular verse was revealed He says ونزل that this verse was revealed لَمَّا تَأَخَّرَ الْوَحْيُ أَيَّامًا When revelation was delayed for a number of days. And according to some riwayat, uh, this is when the Prophet ﷺ was approached by some mem members of the Quraysh who posed those three questions to him that they had learned from the Yahud of Medina that asked the Prophet ﷺ about uh, uh, the the sleepers, the seven sleepers, the companions of the cave, ask him about a ruh, ask him about dhul qarnain. So the Prophet sallallahu said that I will give you the answer tomorrow, but he forgot to say insha Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa taala then uh, delayed revelation for a number of days. So perhaps it's referring to that time period, or it could be some other time period. When the the following verse was revealed. لَمَّا تَأَخَّرَ الْوَحْيُ أَيَّامًا When revelation was delayed for a number of days. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ لِجِبْرِيلٍ And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Jibreel عليه السلام when he finally came, مَا يَمْنَعُكَ أَن تَزُورَنَا أَكْثَرَ مِمَّا تَزُورُنَا What is stopping you, what is preventing you from visiting us more than you already visit us? I mean, the revelation was delayed for a number of days. And when Jibreel السلام, came again with new revelation, the Prophet وسلم, posed this question to him. That, you know, what's stopping you? What's preventing you from visiting us more often? Right? More than you visit us now. So, وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ According to this interpretation and understanding, Jibreel السلام, is saying this. That we only descend by the command of your Lord. 
لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِينَ وَمَا خَلْفَنَا وَمَا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ To him belongs whatever is before us and whatever is behind us and everything in between. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيًّا And your Lord is not forgetful. So, وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ We do not come. We do not descend except with the command of your Lord. لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِينَ to him belongs whatever is before us. Ay amamana. Whatever is in front of us, min umur al akhira. From the affairs of the hereafter. Wama khalfana. And whatever is behind us, min umur al dunya. In terms of the affairs of the world. Wama bayna dhalik. And whatever is in between that. Ay ma yakudu fi hadha al waqt ila qiyam al sa'a. Meaning whatever is happening at this time. Until the day of judgment. A. Lahu ilmu dhalika jami'i. Knowledge of all of that belongs to Allah alone. Wa ma kana rabbuka nasiyya. And your Lord was not forgetful. Bi ma'na nasiyan. A meaning tarikan laka. Your Lord had not forgotten you. Your Lord had not forsaken you. Bi ta'khir al wahi ank. By delaying revelation from you. Huwa. رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما فاعبده واصطبر لعبادته هل تعلم له سميا He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and everything in between So worship him alone and be steadfast in his worship Do you know of anyone equal to him in his attributes Do you know of anyone equal to him So هو Allah is Rabbu, the Lord, the Master, Maliku, the Owner. As-Samawati wal of the heavens and the earth, wa ma baynahuma, and whatever is in between them. Fa'budhu, so worship Him alone, wastabir li'ibadati, and remain steadfast upon His worship. Remain steadfast in worshiping Him. A, isbir alayha. Have sabr upon his worship, upon ibadah. Right, remain steadfast, firm, strong, persevere, endure upon worship. هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيَّةِ Right, do you know of anyone equal to him? A مُسَمَّنْ بِذَلِكْ Or do you know anyone else who is named Allah? Who is the Lord and the owner of the heavens and the earth and everything in between? لا, of course not. The rhetorical question, meaning of course not. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما فاعبده واصطبر لعبادته هل تعلم له سميا ويقول الإنسان أإذا ما مت لسوف أخرج حيا أَوَلَا يَذْكُرُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ يَكُ شَيْئًا فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَحْشُرَنَّهُمْ وَالشَّيَاطِينَ ثُمَّ لَنُحْضِرَنَّهُمْ حَوْلَ جَهَنَّمَ جِثِيًّا ثُمَّ لَنَنْزِعَنَّ مِنْ كُلِّ شِيْعَةٍ أَيُّهُمْ أَشَدُّ عَلَى الرَّحْمَانِ عِتِيًّا ثم لنحن أعلم بالذين هم أولى بها صليا وإن منكم إلا واردها كان على ربك حتما مقضيا ثم ننجي الذين اتقوا ونذر الظالمين فيها جثيا وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ خَيْرٌ مَقَامًا وَأَحْسَنُ نَدِيًّا وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَحْسَنُ أَثَاثًا وَرِئْيًا قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الضَّلَالَةِ فَلْيَمْدُدْ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ مَدَّا حَتَّى إِذَا رَأَوْا مَا يُوْعَدُونَ إِمَّا الْعَذَابَ وَإِمَّا السَّاعَةِ 
فسيعلمون من هو شر مكانا وأضعف جندا ويزيد الله الذين اهتدوا هدى والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير مردا قال رحمه الله ويقول الإنسان المنكر للبعث هو أبي بن خلف أو الوليد بن المغيرة النازل فيه الآية أإذا بتحقيق الهمزة الثانية وتسهيلها وإدخال ألف بينها بوجهيها وبين الأخرى ما مت لسوف أخرج حيا من القبر كما يقول محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فالاستفهام بمعنى النفي أي لا أحيا بعد الموت أو لا أحيا بعد الموت وما زائدة للتأكيد وكذا, الكل وكذا اللام ورد عليه بقوله تعالى أولا يذكر الإنسان أصله يتذكر أبدلت التاء ذالا وأدغمت في الذال وأدغمت في الذال وفي قراءة تركها وسكون الذال وضم الكاف أن خلقناه من قبل ولم يك شيئا فيستدل بالابتداء على الإعادة الله سبحانه وتعالى now says ويقول الإنسان أإذا ما مت لسوف أخرج حيا Man says Once I am dead Will I really be brought back to life? After I die Will I really be raised to life again? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting the um, corrupt beliefs of the mushrikun of Mecca. And one of the most difficult things they found to believe in is life after death. They consider that to be impossible, something far-fetched, something way out there. It was really difficult for them to believe this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relating their objection. وَيَقُولُ الْإِنسَانِ Man says Then Imam Al-Mahalli highlights which man is being referred to Al-Munkiru lil Ba'thi, The one who rejects resurrection The one who rejects and denies life after death And in this context It's referring to a specific person Which is either identified here as Ubayy ibn Khalaf Right, it's either referring to Ubayy ibn Khalaf or Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira And both of them were great enemies of Islam Amongst the leadership of Quraysh Enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam An-Nazilu fihi al-Aya Regarding whom this verse was revealed So this verse was revealed regarding specifically Ubayy ibn Khalaf Or Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira Or anyone else that adopted their same Attitude and mindset and beliefs Regarding life after death Aida ما here متو Imam al-Mahalli uses a different qira'ah and we have متو the meaning is the same that when I die right, when I die will I really be brought back to life will I really be raised to life again so this first hamza here is hamza al-istifham إذا بتحقيق الهمزة الثانية here he's highlighting the different ways of reciting a'idha which have been mentioned before and again I am not an expert in qira'at I am not an expert in the different recitations so I am not going to try to uh, you know pronounce how these are supposed to be recited but what he's saying is that one of them that you have بتحقيق الهمزة الثانية that you say both hamzas a'idha which is the qira'ah that most of us are familiar with وتسهيلها or you do تسهيل of the second one Right, you make it lighter somehow. وَإِدْخَالِ أَلِفٍ بَيْنَهَا And you can also put an alif, right, between the first hamza and the second hamza. بِوَجْهَيْهَا يعني with تسهيل and without تسهيل. وَبَيْنَ الْأُخْرَى So basically it's highlighting that there's four different ways of reciting this. Right, مَا مُتُّ If I die or when I die, لَسَوْفَ أُخْرَجُ حَيَّ Will I really be brought back to life? مِنَ الْقَبْرِ From the grave. 
as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. فَالْإِسْتِفْحَامُ بِمَعْنَ النَّفِي And this question is actually conveying the meaning of negation and denial. Meaning, لَا أَحْيَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ I will not live after death. Or I will not be brought back to life after death. And he says, Dama here is extra. And he grammatically speaking for the sake of emphasis. And so is the nam. Right? Ma mittu, the ma here is added for emphasis. La sawfa, the lam here is also added for emphasis. Wurudda alayhi bi qawlihi ta'ana. And this person's objection is responded to. And it itself is rejected by the statement of Allah. أَوَلَا يَذْكُرُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ يَكُوا شَيْئًا Right. Does man not remember that we created him when he was nothing before? Right. Does this individual or do these individuals not remember that we created them before when they were nothing? So, awala yadhakkaru, here he's using a different qira'ah. He's using the verb yadhakkaru, which was originally yatadhakkaru. And here Imam Mahalli himself highlights that. He says, asluhu, the original verb was yatadhakkaru, from verb for number five. Tadhakkara yatadhakkaru. He says, the ta was changed into a dal, and then it was udrimat. Then the dal was then assimilated into the other one. So it became يَذَّكَّرُ وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ تَرْكُهَا And in another qira'a, we leave the, the, the ta, or we leave the dhal, uh, وَسُكُونُ الدَّال with the sukun on the dhal, وَضَمُّ الْكَافِ يَعْنِي أَوَلَا يَذْكُرُ Which is the qira'a we are more familiar with. Right? Does, not, does man not remember? أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ that we created him before. وَلَمْ يَكُوا شَيْئًا When he was nothing. Right. فَيَسْتَدِلْنَا And by doing so, by remembering this, he can do istidlal. He can derive dalil and evidence and proof بِالْإِبْتِدَى عَلَى الْإِعَادَى That by recognizing that Allah is the one who created me in the first place, Allah can also repeat it. Right, that all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can repeat it as well. So I am going to stop here for today. Um, we have reached the end of verse number uh, 67. So inshallah in our next lesson we will start with verse number 68. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this effort of ours and place it on our scale of good deeds on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of increasing our understanding of the Qur'an and increasing our love for the Qur'an. May Allah make the Qur'an a proof for us and not a proof against us. Wa salli allahumma ala nabiyyina wa mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.